The doctrine of the Trinity is that God is not just one person. That's called Unitarianism. Trinitarianism says that God is three persons, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Now, I think that this doctrine is right at the core of the Christian faith. It serves to distinguish Christianity from Judaism and Islam, which are both forms of Unitarianism. We believe that God is tri-personal rather than unipersonal. I don't think that it's necessarily essential to salvation, however. For example, I think that Abraham and Moses will be in heaven. They were saved, but they didn't believe the doctrine of the Trinity. They'd never heard of it. And similarly, I imagine there are people today, people on the mission field who hear the gospel preached over the shortwave radio, who place their faith in Christ and are saved, who don't understand or have an appreciation of the doctrine of the Trinity. And sadly, there may be people in our churches, frankly, who do not understand and believe in the doctrine of the Trinity. But nevertheless, they are believing in Christ as Savior and believing that He is divine, that He's the Lord. Um, and so I don't think that belief in the Trinity is essential to salvation. Now, when we talk about God and how He existed before creation and so on, uh, these are puzzling things, I admit that. And uh, they, it's recorded in the Hadith that the Prophet, peace be upon him, said to us, uh, don't think about the personality of God, just think about His uh, attributes, because otherwise you get yourself confused. You can ask confusing questions. Is God inside his creation or not? If he is outside of his creation, where was he before there was any creation and so on? So there are all of these confusing questions. Uh, and uh, Hadith says that Satan will even come to you and ask you, well, who created God if, if God created everything else? So at that time, you see, rajim. Now we have a similar question, which is asking something about the mystery of God. It does not mean that because we excuse this one, we must now excuse the Trinity, because the Trinity now we are seeing has a historical development. It went away from the clear declaration. We would say, let's just stick to what the scriptures told us. We wouldn't have known, but the scriptures told us God is like this. These are his names. These are his attributes. This is what you say about him. So we stick to that. The Old Testament did not say that God is love. Uh, the New Testament says, but in the later writing, towards the end of the first century, that means for many decades, Christians did not have a piece of writing in which they can say, look, it says that God is love. So what was he before that? Uh, how would the Jews answer this question to say that God is love? Our Christian friends say that because God is love, he must be a trinity so there is love between the three persons. But then the love is still internal within the trinity is just what? Uh, some part of God loving some other part of God. It's just like a person having a dual personality and saying, I love my other person. So there is an internal love maybe, but it still does not extend to anyone else. So I do not believe that, that uh, the Trinity answers this question. Yes, it sounds nice as, a, as an argument. It's less an emotional one. Uh, everybody likes love and we like unconditional love. So it feels good to hear about that love. But the Old Testament also says that God hates. And he hates certain people in Deuteronomy chapter 18, for example. Uh, so, and, and, and in the Psalms. Uh, so when God hates people, how do you reconcile that with love? Well, obviously that's a different question. Thank you. Um, so my next question will be, um, we talked a little bit about how God is the greatest conceivable being. And I would ask you, which is the, which is a greater being? A being which eternally has a, has a, a love that reaches out to another, a sacrificial love? or a love which is selfish and, and is um, satisfied fully on one, uh, absorbed fully by oneself. So uh, do, do we need a God who uh, sacrifices himself to show his love for the people? Well, now, if, if we think of God sacrificing himself, we're going into like uh, logical absurdity. Uh, it, it, because then if God, by definition, lives, he is uh, Yohi, he, he lives, uh, uh, he gives life. And he is Hayulayamut, he lives and he does not die. So what would it mean to say that God sacrificed himself? In fact, the Christian thinking about Jesus sacrificing himself is full of logical contradictions. And uh, C. Randolph Ross has pointed this out in her, her book, Common Sense Christianity. For example, if you think that Jesus is God and then he goes to the cross, he knows that, that he's gonna survive after three days. So he knows that nothing's gonna be taken from him. So it's not a real sacrifice. He knows he's just gonna rest for three days and come back to life. 
so where is the sacrifice if he is really God? And if he is not God, then God did not die for our sins. If you say that Jesus died for our sins and he was God when he was on the cross dying, that means God died. But by definition, God cannot die. Uh, and then somebody may say, well, no, it's just the human part died. But then you separated the human from the divine. And according to the Athanasian Creed, you cannot do that. You fall into heresy. And uh, as many Christian writers like uh, James White and uh, Stephen Bullivant, Stephen Bullivant actually entitled his book, subtitled it, How Not to Be a Heretic. And his title is The Trinity. So he wants you to understand the Trinity in a way that you won't be a heretic. But Christians easily fall into heresy one way or another, according to these scholars. Because if you emphasize the humanity of Jesus uh, too much, then, uh, then you fall into one heresy. If you em emphasize his divinity too much, you fall into another heresy. If you em emphasize uh, the personalities of the three uh, it, too much, then they become separate and become three gods. You fall into Trinitarianism. So either you fall into Trinitarianism or you fall into mod the modalist heresy or, or you fall into Arianism, which is considered a heresy from within the Christian uh, church.